So just going through this from verse 10 up to verse 26. Okay, Shem, when he was 100 years old, I shall pass. Okay. We covered this last time when, right? Did we? Not yet. No. Okay. Okay, so when Shem was 100 years old, Ark Spashan was born. And Shem lived for another 500 years, that's why he stole the lands by 600. When Ark Pachad was 35 years old, Shem was born. And Ark Pachad lived for another 400 years, that's why he stole the lands by 438. When Shema was 30 years old, Eber was born. Sorry, my tongue twister for me, the names. Okay, and Shema lived for another 403 years. That's why the total lifespan is 423. When Eber was 34 years old, Peleg was born. Okay, and he lived for another 430 years. That's why his total lifespan is 464. When Peleg was 30 years old, Ru was born, and Peleg lived for another 209 years. That's why his total lifespan is 239. Okay? When Ru was 32 years old, Seru was born, and Ru lived for another 277 years. That's why his total lifespan is 239. When Seru was 30 years old, Nahor was born, and Sarah lived for another 200 years, that's why his total lifespan is 230 years. When Nahor was 29 years old, Sarah was born, and Nahor lived for another 119 years, his total lifespan is 148 years. When Sarah was 70 years old, this is where we do actually end here, okay? He had Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. So we just read actually verse, verses 10 to 26. That's the content of verses 10 to 26. Okay, so when Terah was, was 70 years old, he became three sons. Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. Okay, now very important. I am here following, we are just jumping from one generation to the other. The important generations are, of course, Adam and Eve. The second generation in some way is very important, Shem. And then who will be the next important generation? Huh? Noah. Okay. Noah. After Noah, who will be the next important generation? Huh? Okay, Shem, of course. Another important thing, but who will be the next? Abraham. Okay, so Abraham. What generation is Abraham? Four. Twenty. Okay, so we are not in the twenty generation. Remember, we are following the line of Jesus, huh? At least we have got to the twenty generations. At least you can already say, I know until the twenty generation. <laughs> that is Abraham. Abraham is the twenty generation. So if you ask me, the key persons you should know at least at this point of the 20th generation, as we have mentioned, Adam, Seth, Enoch in a way. Why is Enoch very important? Again, he's the seventh generation and therefore the perfection of goodness. That's why what happened to him? God took him. He walked with the Lord and he was no more because he's the seventh generation. But because Enoch supposedly the perfection of goodness disappeared, who now becomes the perfection of goodness? Lamech. Why do we have to see that in Lamech? He lived for a period of seven, seven, seven. Perfection, or perfection, and perfection. And then the next important is Noah. What do you expect of Noah? Being the son of the perfect, okay, perfect people. Of course, he's the righteous man. That's why when God decided to destroy everything in a great plan, it will be no one who will be blameless in the sight of God. He will be the one to be saved. If it is family. Then Shem, in a way, is important down the line. Abraham. Okay? So those are, if you ask me, those are the important generations. The others, 
Yeah, just mentioned. Now, again, what do you notice? Right? When we read from Adam to Lamech, remember we have all of those dates? Notice, before we read this, before we read this generation, notice the Bible again doesn't mention the years. Why again? Why is there no mention of years? Remember when we were talking about the line of uh, Ham? It just says Canaanites and everything. Why don't we no mention of years? Why? Because they are not important. Because they are the evil line. Okay? The Bible takes time in telling us how long they live because they are the good line. Okay? So it matters for us because they're the good line. It matters to us how long they live. But for the evil line, of course we don't care. How I wish we can just erase them, right? But no, they exist. That's why we have their time, but we don't give the years, okay? Unlike here, okay? So here begins the story. Now, are you also, I, I, I know you're also aware, we are reading now chapter 11, okay? Which means, which means what? If you should remember the introduction from the public lectures, we are entering into the second period. Remember the first period? The early world, which is chapter 1 to 11. And then, Book of Genesis, chapter 12 to 50, we call that as the patriarchs. That's why the first one will be. Abraham. So don't, don't uh, forget that. Remember the whole biblical story is divided into how many periods? How many periods? Twelve periods. Remember? Twelve periods. Yet it's very important to have the periods in mind, huh? Because if you have the periods in mind, you have the whole biblical story. Okay? Early world, creation, Noah, everything like that. And then you enter into patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, down the line. Okay? I hope you're not forgetting that. <laughs> anyway, okay, let's go. Let's go to here, chapter 11. These are the descendants of Terah. We are now in verse 27. These are the descendants of Terah. Terah began Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. Haran died before Terah his father. That means Haran died earlier than his father Terah. Okay? So Haran died earlier than his father Terah. In his native land, in more of the Chaldeans. Oh, the addition of Adam, sorry. Okay? Oh, and the Abraham and the word took wives, and the name of Abraham's wife was? What's the name of Abraham's wife? Sarah. Sarah. Okay. Haran, as the son, name of God, let's go to the wife, Sarah. Okay. And then, the word, and the name of the word's wife was? Milka. Okay. Now listen to this. Daughter of Haran, Milka is the daughter of Haran. That's why that is the color coding of father. Notice Lot and Milka are, are of the same color. Why? They are brother sister. And they have another. Actually, I'm so confused if Iska is a male or female. <laughs> they have another sibling named Iska. That's why they're called as a letter. That means the wife of Nahor is his niece, Milka. I'm so confused because that's the practice during the time. You need to marry your relative. It's the other way around with us now. During the time they married the relative. Okay? Later on, we will actually find out that. What do you remember about this book? Those who were there, because people were there. 
You forget already? But you remember about this too? Abraham is Sarai. Dear brother and sister, half brother and half sister. Okay, later on we find out that Abraham and Sarai are half brother and half sister. But they're married to each other. Just like Milka, who is niece of the poor, but married to the poor. That's why it's a little confusing in the Bible when they mention all of those things. This is really so confusing like this. But again, don't get scandalized because that's really their practice during the time. Okay? They really marry their relative. Now again, the question of father, will they not have defects? Okay? Because now we are not allowed to marry our own relative because there will be problems, right? What was the explanation? Well, by the theologians, the theologians will say that this is closest to creation, God's perfect creation. That's why there is no defect in them. As we go farther and farther from the original plan of God, from the original human nature, we will have the defects. Okay, so that's only the explanation of the theologians. But you know, that's their reflection. Okay, the point is that's what the Bible tells us. Can we argue about it? No, it's given. <laughs> you cannot argue with something that is already given. It's already there. Okay, it's already there. What was I explaining to you last uh, last Tuesday? Remember, I was telling you. Was it this group? It was saying that in a way, it is easier for us to believe in the resurrection than during the time of Jesus. That's why you remember the gospel the other other Sunday. Was was the gospel the other other Sunday? Do not let your hearts be troubled. Okay. Why does why why were they troubled? Because the disciples were thinking, how could he say? He should suffer, die, and rise again from the dead. That is just inconceivable. It's difficult. Now, now for us, it's easier to believe that. Why is it easier to believe in the resurrection of the dead? For us. Why? Because it already happened. Can you argue with something that already happened? But imagine the disciples, it has not happened yet. The resurrection has not happened yet. And then Jesus tells them, I will suffer and die and rise again on the third day. They'll be like, how oh, is not even possible? Okay? Oh, by the way, this is very important for us to realize, huh? Remember that on Thursday, in the Archdiocese of Magdalena, we are celebrating the Ascension, huh? Okay, on Thursday. In the past years, we celebrated on the seventh Sunday. But this year, well, they declared that it should be observed on the Thursday of the sixth week of Easter. This is this Thursday. Why is that? What why? Why Thursday of the sixth week? You're coming to Jesus now. Huh? Very good. Because the ascension of the Lord happened on the 40th day after He rose from the dead. If you count the days from the Easter Sunday from the resurrection of the Lord, the 40th day is the Thursday of the 6th week of Easter. This Thursday is the 40th day. That's why if you are counting the days, the ascension really is on the Thursday of the 6th week of Easter. But the church, most of the diocese says, move the celebration into the seventh Sunday. And what is the reason? So that people, or people could celebrate it. Do you follow me? Because when do you go to church? Honestly, Sunday. So if you insist on celebrating it on the Thursday, few people will be able to celebrate it. That's why I hope you bear in mind that if you are following the, the law of the church, since the archdiocese declared it to be celebrated this Thursday, therefore this Thursday is a holiday of obligation. Huh? It's a sin that goes to us this Thursday in the archdiocese of Amsterdam. 
So they you know the consequences of those decisions and declarations they make. So the uh, forgetting. Now I went to that because why did Jesus only ascend on the 40th day? Why did he not rise and ascend immediately? Why? It's also written in the Bible. That's why we are here in the Bible class matter, so we will know because we don't know. <laughs> because the Acts of the Apostles would tell us that after Jesus rose from the dead, Jesus kept appearing to his disciples for a period of 40 days. He was appearing to his disciples for a period of 40 days. Read that in the Acts. I believe it's the first chapter of Acts. So, he appears to them for a period of 40 days, and it is only on the 40th day that Jesus ascended to the Father. Oh, by the way, that's why it was. It's good to understand these things. We have a lot of practices in the Catholic Church that are true and very good. Unfortunately, sometimes we don't know the reason behind. Okay? We do a lot of things like very just why. I don't know. Okay. Like for example, right? We have the 40th day for the Matai, especially for the Filipinos. Have you ever wondered why we pray for the Matai again on the 40th day of their death? Essential. Okay. The reason for that is the essential. We are saying that if our loved one after dying doesn't enter the kingdom of heaven immediately, we are hoping that just like Jesus Christ, who kept, who kept appearing to his disciples for a period of 40 days and then the 40th day ascended to the Father, we are hoping that on the 40th day, our loved one also enters the kingdom of heaven. That's why we have the 40 days. So a lot of people, when they pray the 40th even especially in the Philippines when I was there, People gather again on the 40th day. They love a feast, pray for the dead. You ask them why? I don't know. <laughs> this is the reason. So that we are hoping that on the 40th day, the Matai ascends to the Father. Okay? So what's the point? Uh, why is Father bringing this up? Going back to, to the point of saying, it's easier for us to understand. Jesus appeared to them for a period of 40 days, and the Acts of the Apostles or the Bible tells us that he kept appealing to them because he was explaining to them everything that he taught them. It's a review. Why do you think review? It's like this. To exaggerate the, the, the matter. It's like this. Jesus told them before he went, before he suffered and died and rose again. He told them, I'm going to suffer, die, and rose again on the third day. The disciples are like, oh. Even happen. And then here comes the resurrection. He actually rose from the dead. He appears to himself, say, I told you. That's why for Jesus to go back for 40 days and appearing to them, reviewing everything, is like, see, all the things I told you happen, right? They could not argue anymore. That's why Jesus said, right, in the gospel, in the gospel yesterday, you have seen all of these things, therefore you must testify. That's why people of the resurrection, we are people of the resurrection, we cannot but testify. Huh? It belongs to our identity being Catholics of the resurrection to prove that Jesus really had risen from the dead. We are witnesses. Okay? That's why I always say, just like with Noah, remember I was telling you with Noah? In a way, we are blessed, we are not born during the time of Noah, because if we are born during the time, I think we will not believe Noah. If we were born during the time of Jesus, perhaps we would not also believe in the resurrection. <laughs> Until we actually go for it. Now, we already know. It's like we have already watched the whole movie. Since you have already seen the whole movie, you understand everything in the movie. Amen? Amen. Okay, let's go back to here. <laughs> so, again, Milkan, huh? Is the wife of the world. Muhammad is already dead. Okay. Now it says, who is son Abraham, his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abraham, and brought them out of Ur of the Chaldeans to the land of Canaan. So, therefore, many friends, it tells us that the one who was the original plan to go to the land of Canaan is not really Abraham. What the original plan to 
go to the land of Canaan? Terah and his father. Terah. Okay? He took Abraham. He took Sarai. He took Lot because Haran is already dead. Okay? It's already dead. He took those, those one, two, and three. And plan to go to the land of Canaan. This later on will be the promised land. By this time, we already have the land of Canaan, but it's not yet promised. It's just the land of Canaan. Because it will not be promised to Terah. Terah will just would like to go to the land of Canaan. That's why it came. So that when you get into those parts, you will understand. That's why later on, when we get into Isaac, when they're looking for the wife of Isaac, when the Bible says, go to the land of Namur and find a wife for my son Isaac. Who is Isaac, by the way? The son of Abraham. I think I have it here. Okay, the son of Abraham. When they will be looking for a wife for Isaac, Abraham will say, go to the land of Namur. Again, I would like to repeat that because if you don't get that point, it will get a little confusing. When you hear those names, bear in mind, it refers to the person, it also refers to the land. Okay? So when it says, for example, the land of Nahor, it actually means it's the land owned by Nahor. Are you funny? Yes. Or it can also mean the land named Nahor. I don't know if Chapin Chamor, if there's a person named Derrido, is there? <laughs> Nobody? Okay. Like when you say the land of Derrido, you can mean the place owned by the person Derrido, or the name, name, the place name Derrido. But anyway, so that's why here, this is not very clear in the Bible, that's why I'm giving you this clarification. Huh? That's why when they will look for a wife, they will have to go back when it says to the place of Nahor, wife, and look for the wife because, because, a little complicated, but I hope you're following, because they married their relative. Okay, we have the partner. Abraham goes to the land of Canaan, they were already in Canaan. And found a place to be good for business 
Will you still go to Karnak? That's why Tara decided to stay in Haran and he died in Haran. The lifetime of Tara was 205 years, then Tara died in Haran. Now, what do you expect when the father dies? Remember that interculture, huh? Interculture. Those who attended the, the Red Tate collection, remember we were reflecting on the prodigal son? Remember I was telling you that interculture, in the Hebrew culture, the eldest son is very important. The eldest son is like the second father of the family. When the father dies, automatically the eldest son becomes the father of the family. That's why they are very strict to the eldest son. Huh? The eldest son gets two-thirds of everything. And all the rest is divided among the other siblings. But two-thirds goes to the eldest. Okay? Sometimes in our culture is the other way around, right? We we'll give more to the eldest, it's the eldest will take care of it. But in the Hebrew culture, no. The eldest takes the biggest portion. That's why in the prodigal son, right? Who asks for his share? The younger brother. The younger son, the eldest son. Which is between the two, is the one who doesn't have any way right for the inheritance. You me? Okay. That's why here, when Terah dies, Abraham, the eldest, becomes the father of the family. Okay, when he becomes the father of the family, La, okay, who is the son of Aaron, who died young, La is like adopted by Terah. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. When Terah dies, La will be adopted by Abraham. Okay, because he becomes the father of the family. Getting a little complicated, but I hope you are able to follow. Are you? Yes. Now let's go to chapter 12. This is now, of course, officially the second period. This is, of course, the patriarchs. The Lord said to Abraham, Go forth from your land, your relatives, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. So where are they now? Where are they now? Haram. Originally, they are from Ur. Terah lives Ur, travels, was going to Canaan, reaches Haran, decides to stay in Haran, dies in Haran. Abraham takes over, and Abraham receives the call. And what was the call? Go forth from your land, your relatives, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. That's why now the promised land will become, the land of Canaan will become the promised land. It was not promised to Terah. It was promised to Abraham. Although Terah was the first one who wanted to go to the land of Canaan, but it was not promised to him. It was he who wanted to go there. But Abraham was promised. Notice. God did not even say the name of the place, huh? If you are Abraham, you can follow. What will be your first question if you are Abraham? Notice the command of God. Go forth from your land, from your relatives, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Well, if you might be asked to travel, the first question I ask where? <laughs> I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. 
and curse those who curse you, all the families of the earth will find blessing in you. So the worldwide blessing will begin with Abraham. That's why Abraham will be the line of Jesus. Now notice the promise of God also to Abraham. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. You know, my dear friends, when God asks us to do something, even though sometimes it's like just like Abraham, I don't even know where I'm going. But if we put our trust in God, believe that God will always protect you. Okay? No questions asked. Just like your children. Son, can you go there? But mother, just trust me. <laughs> Son, you want to be a doctor? Yes. But I don't think that we can afford it. Just trust me. So when God called Abraham, he promised him, I will bless those who bless you, I will curse those who will curse you. Those things we will see as Abraham travels. I hope those who were attending Bible class before pandemic remember that. How many did he bless? I don't even remember last day, Father. How much more than before pandemic? Abraham will be blessed. We don't <laughs> Abraham will be very rich man. He will be very rich. Allow me to just even say, I think Abraham will be the richest in the Bible. I would say that in my study of the Bible. And he will be blessed because he's very rich in the Bible. And that Abraham will also be protected. Anybody who does evil to Abraham will be punished for even though sometimes it is unintentional. You remember that? Unintentional thing? Mm. Ah, it's good when we went back to Genesis. You <laughs> <laughs> don't remember those. Remember somebody committed something against an offense against him, and the person was just saying, I'm not even aware. But God said, no, because you offended him. You did something bad to him. Do you remember that? Pharaoh? The Pharaoh. The Pharaoh, remember? Mm -hmm. He took. Uh, he, he tried to take Sarah. Take Sarah. But was he guilty in a way? Guilty in a way from our perspective of, you know. Uh, Abraham kind of liked it. He was not aware that Sarah was the wife. That's where the king or the Pharaoh was saying, I didn't know it. Abraham didn't know it. He didn't know it. Abraham was 75 years old. So how old was Abraham when he received the fall? 75. Where is he coming from? Haran. Where is he going? Okay. We don't know yet. <laughs> God told him, I will say. But now we know it is the king. Okay? This is, that's why we call it as the promise. Abraham took his wife, his brother, son, Lot, all the possessions that they had accumulated and the persons they had in her. What does that mean? And the persons they had acquired. What does that mean? Slaves. Slaves. Remember they were slaves during the time. And slaves are not considered human beings. Huh? Slaves are considered as Potential. objects, properties. You buy them in the market. <laughs> you need more slaves, just go to the market. Buy them. Remember? Joseph was sold in the market. Okay. That's why you can you can tell that Terra really is a business man. Huh? That's why he really stayed in Haran. Because Haran is a place of commerce. Okay. Notice that he accumulated properties in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan. Now it is there. When they came to the land of Canaan, Abraham passed through the land as far as the sacred place of Shechem. Later on, we will know how important Shechem is by the O of Moreh. I hope we will also find out later on how important Moreh is, the Mount Moreh. Remember? 
The Canaanites were then in the land. The Lord appeared to have Abraham and said, To your descendants, I will give this land. So they were already in the promised land, in the land of Canaan. And God said, To your descendants, I will give this land. So Abraham did not offer there to the Lord who appeared to him. From there, he moved on to the hill country east of Bethel, pitching his tent with Bethel to the west and I to the east. All of this in this we will read once the Israelites travel in the desert and they will be attacking all of these cities. He built an altar there to the Lord and invoked the Lord by name. Then Abraham journeyed on by stages to Nebuchadnezzar. There was famine in the land, so Abraham went down to Egypt to sojourn there, since the famine in the land was severe. When he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife Sarai, I know that you are a beautiful woman. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, She is his wife, then they will kill me. But let me be. Please say, therefore, that you are my sister, so that I may fare well from your account, and my life may be spared for your sake. Okay? So Abraham is scared because the wife is so. That's why they say Sarah is a very beautiful woman. Unfortunately, of course, barren. Okay? But Abraham will say, okay, we're traveling now. When we enter Egypt, the men will fall in love with you. And in order to get to you, what will they do? They'll kill me. Because I'm your husband. Therefore, do not tell them that I am your husband. Tell them I am your brother. Was Abraham lying? No. Huh? No, because they're really brother and sister. Are you funny? Don't tell them I'm here. You're just not brother and sister. It's really weird. <laughs> so, because of that also, he will be spared from death, but at the same time, he will. We are already fast, fast forwarding because I'm just checking in case you remember the story. God 
has its own justice. Mm -hmm. He rewards those who do good and punishes those who do bad. In fact, you know, in fact, it sounds a little eerie, huh? but the justice of God is really very. <laughs> you know, in the Old Testament, the justice of God is always true. Do something bad with that. That's why when somebody does evil to you, please don't ever, ever be petty. Let God take care of it. You know, the reflex that you can make to the other person is nothing to what God will exact as justice. Okay? I have seen that in my life. People who would criticize you, do everything to destroy you, don't do anything. When a person does evil to you, I'm sure I've mentioned this thing already before. Not because a person has done evil to you, you already have a license to return evil. No. Uh, because whether he did it to me, so I'm gonna do it. Not because he did it to you, you already have the license to return also evil. Because if you return evil, then you're both evil. Just like, when, just like when I was young, right? Siblings will always fight, right? Then mom will come. Both of you are crying. What happened? Oh, he, he, he punched me. What did you do? I punched you back. Oh, yeah, both of you are bad. <laughs> both of you are going to get it, right? Because both of you punch. Right? But if what happened is, why are you crying? He punched me. What did you do? Nothing. Ah, you'll be in trouble. Him, the one who punched. But if you punch back, both of you will come here. <laughs> yeah. Remember the old times? Yes. Good device. So. <laughs> An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, which is called the Sabbath. That's the oldest rule ever in the scriptures recorded. We call that as the Code of Hammurabi. We call that as the Lex Talionis. Lex Talionis is law, Lex, law, Talionis of revenge. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, it is called Lex Talionis, the law of revenge. It sounds very, what's the right word? Uh, barbaric or whatever, like, okay? But actually, the purpose of Lex Talionis is very positive. You would appreciate the reason why they have that law. Why? Because in the olden times, the revenge is always greater than the original harm. Remember, during the time you are by tribes, if you kill a member of one tribe, what happens? The other tribe will make the revenge. And the revenge will be greater than you only kill one person and they'll kill ten. ten. When, you kill, when you kill ten, they'll come back, they'll kill twenty. And then it becomes bigger and bigger. That's why they said, let's control the revenge. An eye for an eye, a two for a two. If you kill one person, you're only allowed to kill one person. So that the purpose of Lex Talionis is to control the revenge. That's why it's positive. If you don't know the context of Lex Talionis, it sounds very primitive, barbaric, or what. But actually, the purpose is positive. But of course, Jesus in the New Testament goes beyond that. What did he say? Do not even return evil for evil. If we behave, remember what did Jesus say? If we behave just like the pagans, what recompense do we get? In our version, it's like saying, if we behave just like the pagans, so what's the point of believing them? You're just the same thing. Okay? So don't ever, huh? my dear friends, don't ever return evil for you. When somebody does evil to you, let God take care of it. Remain doing good. At the end, you will be rewarded for that. God will be saying, look at this man. Even though this neighbor is causing him always irritation every day, but he remain calm. Never return evil. You will be rewarded. But if you are also returning evil, if your neighbor is throwing trash on in your pants, and then when you start cooking, you also throw trash. Take him both of you will be evil. Okay? But, you know, never return evil. Abraham will be protected. 
do his will, his command, believe you will be blessed. Abraham did not wish to be rich, but he became rich. Very rich. People during that time would even go to Abraham and say, Can you beg your God not to punish me because I did not know she is your wife? Okay, that's how God protects me. So just with the will of God, you will be rewarded and protected by God. When Abraham arrived in Egypt, the Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful. When Pharaoh's officials saw her, they praised her, for, praised her to Pharaoh and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. Abraham fared well on her account, and he acquired sheep, oxen, male and female slaves, male and female donkeys and cattle. See? Because the Pharaoh likes the wife and not the sister, he will give Abraham all of those things. That's why Abraham will become rich. But the Lord struck Pharaoh and his household with severe plagues because of Sarai, Abraham's wife. Then Pharaoh saw Abraham and said to him, he said to this, he said, How could you do this to me, Abraham? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? So you know, she is not aware that Sarah is his wife because he introduced Sarah introduced him to be his, to be her brother. Why did you say she is my sister? So that I took her for my wife. Now here is your wife. Take her and leave. Then Pharaoh gave his men orders concerning Abraham, and they set him away with his wife and all that belonged to him. Okay. Finish chapter 12. Any questions so far? Good. Okay, so please be reminded that on Tuesday we will not have Bible class. And uh, instead, I invite you to my silver anniversary, my 25th anniversary. The mass will be, of course, in my own parish, the Makulit Hakon Mary in Toto. The mass will be at 5 p.m. Then after mass, we have a simple reception across the street. This is the community center of the Makulit Okay, uh, I know that in the invitations that uh, some were different. You don't have enough invitations for everyone. It says there, uh, Paris social hall, but the organizers decided to transfer to the community center because they said it's bigger. Anyway, it's just across the street. So I told them not to change those and you can just announce this right there and there. Instead of here, we cross the street. Okay, so I and then on the 30th, I, I hope to bring my mom here so you can meet her. My mom, my eldest brother, and my sister will be coming. At least you can see what I'm doing here on the web. <laughs> <laughs> okay? So, if there's 